Praise the Lord. I have a word that the Lord has put upon my heart that I feel like is needed for the church world today. I believe that if we'll heed to this revelation that we will become more productive in the world in which we live. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to Mark chapter 4. We're going to start reading at verse 3. Mark chapter 4, verse 3. It says, Hearken, behold, there went out a sower to sow, and it came to pass as he sowed. Some fell by the wayside, and the fowls of the air came and devoured it up. And some fell on stony ground, where it had not much earth, and immediately it sprang up, because it had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, it was scorched, and because it had no root, it withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielded no fruit. And other fell on good ground, and it did yield fruit that sprang up and increased, and brought forth some thirty, and some sixty, and some a hundred. And he said unto them, He that hath an ear to hear, let him hear. Let's pray. God, I ask that you help me to minister this, to communicate revelation, without adding anything that is unnecessary. Help me to be led by the Spirit and only speak words that will penetrate the heart and mind of everyone under the sound of my voice. Lord, I give you all the glory for anything that comes forth out of your message. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. I want to preach for just a few minutes from the subject, if you're not sowing, you're not serving. If you're not sowing, you're not serving. Luke chapter 17 verse 10 says, So likewise ye, when ye shall have done all those things which are commanded you, say we are unprofitable servants. We have done that which was our duty to do. We live in a society that deems it a success if we're able to line up with the Word of God. If we're able to keep the thou shalt nots, we consider ourselves profitable servants. But according to Luke chapter 17, the Lord desires us to serve him in a greater capacity than just to keep the thou shalt nots. It's good not to commit adultery. It's good not to lie, not to cheat, not to steal. But I believe that there is a greater service that the Holy Spirit wants us to obtain to. That service is spelled out in Matthew 28, 18 through 20. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. We understand that as the Great Commission, but as that is our call to service. We are only deemed profitable servants when we're sowing, when we're adding to the kingdom. You can sit at home in your living room and keep the thou shalt nots, and you're still not deemed a profitable service. The only way you become a profitable servant is if you go out into the highways and hedges and compel them to come in. So I want to minister for just a few minutes on this subject. If you're not sowing, you're not serving. The Gospel of Mark begins with Jesus' inauguration into the ministry. Jesus steps onto the public scene when he's baptized by John in the Jordan River, a baptismal ceremony that was authenticated when the heavens opened and the Holy Spirit descended upon him as a dove and the voice of God cried out, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. What a service that must have been. Prepared and equipped to fulfill his purpose, Jesus is led into the wilderness by the Spirit to be tempted of the devil. 
The Spirit led Jesus into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. Sometimes when we think God is setting us back, he's actually setting us up. Sometimes what feels like torment is just a test. And if you can pass that test, you can receive the blessing that God intends for you to have. The wilderness was just a test for Jesus. And it ultimately, it was this test that promoted him into his ministerial position. Because after his 40-day stay in the wilderness... He immediately embarks upon the task of evangelizing the nation of Israel. Seemingly overnight, his popularity grows to national proportions, inciting a mob of thousands everywhere he went. Jesus' ministry finds itself firmly positioned in the spotlight of the Jewish people. At the height of his ministerial popularity, Jesus ordains 12 men that he might send them forth to preach. Peter, James, John, Andrew, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Thomas, James the son of Alphaeus, Thaddeus, Simon the Canaanite, and Judas were all ordained to preach and were empowered to heal sickness and to displace demons. God doesn't call you to it without equipping you for 